Amen. Wow. What a way to start the new year. Amen. What a great time of praise and worship. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. And today we want to begin the new year with the idea of what lies ahead. Quite frankly, uh, none of us know that answer, right? We don't know what lies ahead of us. We, and as a matter of fact, as I shared in the first service, I don't think I want to know what lies ahead. I, I, I don't want to know what's out there. But you know what I've realized is that in our day and time, and well, even in the, in the biblical times, a lot of people wanted to know what was out there. They wanted to know the future, and they even today want to know. There's a lot of people who do some crazy things to help prepare for the future uh, because of the fear that they have. They, wanna, they don't want the uncertainty. They don't want uncertainty. They would love to know what's going on out there in, in the future, and they do a lot of crazy things. Man, some, you know, we have this astrology movement that, that's been, it's not a new thing, it's been on since the beginning of time, that the, this mysticism idea, where people want to go to palm readers, they want to read cards, numerology, die, seances, they go to, uh, uh, go to the newspaper every day and see what, what their astrology sign has in store for them. And, and so all of this is the idea of trying to find out What's going to happen in the future? How is my day going to go? What is going to be going on? So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to share with you about the idea of what lies ahead and how we don't have to be afraid. Amen? We in the church, brothers and sisters, we don't have to be afraid of what lies ahead of us. It may not go exactly the way we want. As a matter of fact, I remember standing up here a year ago talking about what lies ahead in 2020 was going to be uh, a, a good year and we had some great plans man did I not know what I was talking about amen but God knew so I no one predicted 2020 to be like it was and so no one can now predict what 2021 is going to be it's just it's impossible but what we do need to know is that we, that we have a God that's in control of all of these things. And I want to look at Joshua today in the book of Joshua for a way for us to be okay with 2021. For us to be okay with not knowing what lies ahead. For us to be okay with the fact that things can go so differently than what we have even planned them to be. But still yet it's going to be okay. So I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Joshua chapter 1. We're going to be reading today starting at verse 1 through verse 9. And we're going to be looking at the idea of entering into this idea of a new year. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and stand with me in honor of reading God's word this morning. <clears throat> Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And it says here, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over to the Jordan, and you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I, as I had said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates and the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down to the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as, it was, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. God, we thank you for the opportunity now to step into this time with your word. And Father, I pray that the words that I'm going to share this morning are not going to be my words, but yours. I pray that this is not a message that I planned, but a message, Lord, that you have prepared for, for us and for myself included. 
And that, Father, the response would be as you desire for it to be. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Today, again, looking at a new year, there's some things that I want to look at, again, for us to be okay with what's coming up, for us to be okay and not be dreading what tomorrow brings or what this year will bring or what the end of the year will bring, but that we can still be okay with whatever's going to be going on. I want to look at Joshua because Joshua was in a pretty unique position, kind of like what many of us are here today, starting a new year and moving on from this time, is that we look and we see that Joshua was entering unknown territory. Not just the future, not just what was out there, but even in his moment of time, we see that he was entering a new uh, unknown territory, places and things that he had never seen. He's now going to be called upon to do things that he had never been called upon to do. And so he was entering, just like many of us, new territory today. And what the first thing I want to look at was he was entering a new job. Now, following Moses, man, that was a job that he didn't know, but he was following Moses. Can you imagine? I mean, of all the things that Moses did and, and all the people and how they depended on Moses and, and that he was the miracles that were performed through him, and all of a sudden you now got to follow that up? Man, who in the world would want that job, amen? Who would want to be able to do those things like that? He, he was a new leader, and, and all the eyes were now upon him. Now, you enter into a new job, and, and, and things are not going to always go the way you planned. And, of course, in, any time you have a, a new job and you go into a place and someone has succeeded you, they've, they've gone on before you, and now they're no longer there, and you are put in this position, you realize that a lot of times you're going to hear some things of, about the, new, the, the old guy. And so you can imagine with Moses, Moses... That now Joshua's going to hear from his people when he says something. Well, Moses never did it that way. Amen? Moses would have done this. Moses reacted this way. So you, you have this. And, and, and even as, as I've experienced that as a teacher and a coach, going into a place where the first job I had was basically the man had been there for over 20-something years, was very successful. And, man, I'm telling you, it, it, it scared me to death. I'm thinking, man, I can't mess this thing up, amen? Same way with the church coming here, following Brother Jamie. Man, what, what, wow, been here for 10 years, and then I step in, I'm going, oh, my goodness. Folks, listen, he was stepping in unknown territory. He, it was a new job that he had never experienced before. And I, got you, I want you to understand something, that he was now going to basically be the leader, this is what his job was going to be. Not just a new job, but he was now the leader. Can I tell you something? That you can be as close to the leadership position as you want to be. But until you become the leader, it's not the same. And he was now, even though he had been Moses' assistant all of those years, he was now stepping in to be the leader. He saw Moses' headaches. He saw the things Moses had to do. He, he, I'm sure he had very intimate conversations with Moses after a long day, and Moses walked in and goes, Oh, those people. Oh, listen, I don't know what that's like being the pastor of First Baptist West, though, all right? I, I, I don't know what that's like. I, I don't have that problem where I go in, those stubborn people. But I could... I can imagine what it would be like if I were having a group of people that were like this, but I don't, I don't know that. So I'm talking off of the cuff here, folks. I don't, I've never experienced that here. Amen. There you go. There you go. But now he was the leader. He stepped into the place. He was there and all eyes were now going to be on him. And you say, well, now, you know what, Pastor? He was dealing with the new group of people. Moses dealt with the others. And remember, they all died before they could go in the promised land. So all those that Moses dealt with, they're all dead. Well, something I've experienced as a teacher and, and a coach is that uh, this whole phrase, the apple doesn't far for, fall far from the tree. Have you, have you experienced that? I mean, I remember at times looking at, at kids going, what in the world is wrong? Then I have parent-teacher conferences, and my answers are given. <laughs> Amen? 
Any of y'all at home watching that, that were my former student parents? That's not y'all either. Amen. <laughs> but listen, he was dealing with the same stuff that Moses was dealing with, uncharted territory. He had never been put in that position. And it's different being an assistant to the leader. I know there were times even now that uh, I've officially actually gone to every one of my pastors, my former pastors, whenever I was uh, volunteering with youth ministry all those years, that I've gone back since and apologized to all my pastors. Because I told them, I said, listen, I, I, I was with you all the time and I thought I knew everything there was. And I thought, man, here's what you should be doing because... I knew everything about being a pastor until I became a pastor. So he was in uncharted territory for his life. Oh, he had been prepared for it, but it was a whole different story now. And so he was entering into this, just like many of us are entering into unknown territory. And then the last thing that I want to see on Joshua was entering unknown territory was not just a new job, but he was leading into a new place. A place where they had never been so much in, of all the people had never been there. Now, of course, we know he knew some of the enemy because you remember Joshua was one of the original 12 spies that Moses sent into the promised land. He said, go over there, spy it out, look at it, see what it is, give us, come back and give us a report. And you remember that the report was, man, the land is great. It's everything God told us it would be. As a matter of fact, look at these grapes. Look at some of the stuff we brought back. It is amazing that what's over there. But he was one of the two, he and Caleb were the only two that said, you know what though, and God will let us have it. God, let's go get it. It's there, ready for us to take. So he was familiar with the people. He saw how big they were. He was familiar with the, the land. He saw how plentiful it was. He was very familiar even with the fortified cities that Moses was, had told them to go spy. He was f very familiar with those things, yet he had never done anything about it. He was familiar with it, but now the things were about to get real, if you will. It's one thing to go over and look. It's another thing to plan out and get all your strategies together and think you've got it all figured out. But when it comes time to actually implement the plan, now it's a different ballgame, isn't it? So now, oh, he saw it. He knew what was there. He was familiarized. He had familiarized himself with it, but now it was time to actually do it. Time was getting very real for him. My friends, listen to me. Many of us may be looking at this next year and we've got some plans. We got some ideas about what God is wanting us to do in the church. And next week with, when I address the state of the church that I do every year uh, on the second Sunday of the, the second, first, uh, second Sunday of the, the, the new year, I give you the state of the church and we, we're, I'm going to lay out some things that God has laid on my heart for our church. But I'm here to tell you, listen, it's one thing to lay them out. It's one thing to plan. It's one thing to even get the vision. But folks, it's quite another when it's time now to say, it's, let's go. It's go time. So he was entering from unfamiliar territory. So many of us in our lives may be doing the same thing. You may have a new job. You may be a new leader. You may, you may have things out there that you're not sure of. And it's time really to go after it. So that is unknown territory. So jo uh, Joshua was in, entering unknown territory. But the second thing was he had to face it so what i want to do very quickly is i want to do look at the scripture here this text and see how we are to if you will face the future how are we to do it as well how are we supposed to do what he did well the first one is here in the in this verse it says to stay in daily fellowship with god we are to stay in daily fellowship in other words it's obedience we are to be obedient to God this new year. We start today being obedient to his call, whatever it is he said. Look in verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Listen, we are to be obedient. But can I tell you something? Being obedient is hard. 
Being obedient is difficult. Doing what God's Word tells us to do is difficult, especially in our day and time. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people that don't like truth, amen? There's a lot of people who in our day and time, and I'm here to tell you, I wish I could tell you that it's going to get easier, but church, listen to me, it's not going to get any easier for the church as we go through here. As a matter of fact, people are already trying to call out for the church to stop speaking truth because what they're doing is they're calling truth hate. That if I speak the word from the word of God here in a truthful way, the people are going to begin to call it hate because they hate the truth. And so for us to, as a church in the new year coming ahead, we are to be obedient to the word of God. We are to be obedient to the call of God regardless of what the world is thinking about it. We must stay in fellowship with God. And if we stay in that fellowship, then we're going to be able to know that, that it's, it's going to be okay. Now Joshua here has a starting point. I want to look very quickly at his starting point. If you want to, you can turn over. I'll have it on the screen. But in Joshua chapter 3, verse 8, it's time now and God is telling Joshua, go ahead, get ready to get out and go take the land. But now what their, their first obstacle that was going to be there was the Jordan River. And the Jordan River was, was not just at its low point. It was at its flood point. And God said, I want you to go. And the first thing you're going to have to do is get across the Jordan River. And here's what I want you to do. In verse 8, he says, you shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So here's, here's, the, here's what's happening. He says, what we're going to have to do, guys, God has told us, for this water to part, for us to get to the other side, we're going to have to get into the water. I'm going to have to step in. I'm the leader. I will go in first. Now you say, well, what was such a big deal? Well, do you remember uh, before, whenever they were getting ready to cross the Red Sea, God didn't call Moses to get into the Red Sea, did he? He said, go to the edge, raise your hands, boom, and the Red Sea parted. Now he's telling Joshua, Joshua, it's not going to happen that way. And we expect things to always, well, it went this way before, so it's got to go this way again, or it's not God's will. This and I, he told him, he said, just get in the water. Just get in the water. It's not going to part until you get in there. So you're going to have to have faith in me to get in the water. And then we look and we see Joshua chapter 3, verse 13, and the Bible says, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord... The Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters come, that come down from the upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. He says, what's going to happen is, Joshua, you're going to get in the water, then you're going to instruct the priests to get in the water with you. Now, you remember we just talked about, sometimes people would say, wait a minute, that's not how Moses did it. He had to convince the priests that it was okay for them to get in the water because when it happened with Moses, he didn't have to get in. So it's going to be different. So his test of faith came immediately when you had to get in the water. My friends, listen to me. I want you to understand something. That sometimes we're going to be, we think, well, we'll get right up to the edge and then God's going to work. Sometimes we get over the edge, amen? Sometimes we have to step in the water. And that's when, the, it's at that moment, I can imagine Mo, uh, uh, Joshua getting in the water and he's walking in and he goes so far in because he's got to now let room for the priests and the Ark of the Covenant to come in that he's standing there and I, I, I sometimes wonder, was he thinking, Lord, I hope this is what you wanted because I'm going to look awful foolish standing in water. I hope this is what you wanted because I've now had to convince priests and you know how they are, you know how those, those pastors are. They're kind of proud people. They don't like looking foolish. And I got to convince that staff to get in the water with me. And boy, when they get in the water, I, I, want it, I pray it parts. Now, I believe he knew it was going to part because he had seen it before. But his test was there. My friends, listen to me. Some of us are going to have to probably this year get in the water but stay in daily fellowship with God. And obedience, we're going to have to obedient, be obedient in times. Listen, I believe we're going to have to be obedient in times that obedience doesn't look so hot. We're going to have to this year, I believe, be obedient in times that people are going to call us crazy for being obedient. I think we're going to be obedient in times this year when the world is going to look at us and say, don't you dare 
do that. Don't you say that? Don't you expect that? Don't you desire that? Folks, we're going to have to get in the water. How are we going to survive 2021? By remaining faithful to God and obedient. So not only do we stay in daily fellowship with God, but we claim God's promises. Look through what he already promised him. He reassured him. Now, they already knew this. They had already been told, this this is your promise, that, that I'm going to give you all of this land. So now he goes back and he tells Joshua again, all this land, wherever your soles or your feet touch, I am giving to you. So, friends, he had to claim the promise that God had given him. We need to also understand that we have been promised God that he is going to be with us. And that's what he told us. He told them there, he said, you'll know that if you'll go and be strong and courageous, knowing that I am there with you, that I'm going to go before you, I'm going to take care of you. That is the promise. My friends, can I tell you today, God is with us now. And he is going to go into the future before us. And he's going to prepare the future for us. And he has made me the promise just as he made us here. He's made you the promise just as he made it here that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am not going to take you out there, throw you in the deep end, and stand back and tell you to sink or swim. I'm going to be out there with you. I'm going to be your life preserver. All you have to do is remain obedient to me and claim the promise that I am there for you, that I am working for you, that all things work together those for the good of those who are called according to God's purpose. That's how we can take on 2021, knowing that God is already out there working. And he's not going to leave us, nor is he going to forsake us. He tells them that in verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he's told us. That's what 2021 is going to be. a, A year with God with us. So not only claim God's promises, but the last one is he tells them, be strong and of good courage. Go through this year being strong and of good, care, good courage. These two wonderful elements that he tells us to, to, to go through here, be strong and courageous. Folks, can I tell you, they sure are a lot better than any astrology stuff. Amen? They're better than the, the, the little things you read in the paper, the daily, uh, what, what do they call them? horoscopes yeah they're better than that can i tell you if you read those for a purpose man stop reading those because one thing that i've i've looked at reading those is that if that is true then every person born on that day will have the same day right because it doesn't say harold here's yours it says your sign is this so this is what happens to you so all of us born in that time gonna get the same thing anyway then we know that's not going to happen. So stop. Listen to God. Listen to God. Follow Him. Because what we have of being strong and courageous and having His fellowship with us is a whole lot better than any other mysticism things out there. And one thing I want you to understand, I may not know the future, and I don't need to know the future. I don't want to know the future. But can I tell you, I know who holds it. I don't know who holds the fu- I don't know what the future holds for me, but I know who holds the future. Amen. And we used to sing that song in church years ago because he lives. Amen. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because I live, all fear is what? Gone. Let's say it again. All fear is because I know who holds the future. And life, listen to me, life is now worth living. I don't care what it is. I know that life is worth living. Next year is worth going through. All for one reason, because he lives. That's it. It's not because of somebody, tell me it's going to be okay. It's not because I've, got to, I've now developed uh, uh, some cures for stuff. It's that I know that Jesus lives, and because he lives, I can face whatever brings me with tomorrow, I can face it. I know that he lives, and all that, that I know that if I'm trusting in him, all the fear that is out there, all the fear that I might have is going to be gone. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And life is worth living because, again, my friends, today, Jesus Christ is alive. And he makes life worth living. 2021 is going to be worth living. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not even going to try to tell you what happened. I, don't, I, I, I can't even imagine it. 
But listen to me. I know, I know, I know that he has not left me, he has not forsaken me, and he's not done it for you either. And today, you can be strong and courageous because he lives. He lives. If you're here today or you're watching on this program, I want to tell you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, then you have a lot to fear. Because it is uncertain for you. But you need Jesus in your life, and it's very simple to have him in there. All you have to do today is call upon his name, ask him to forgive you of your sin, to come into your heart and to save you, to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, as your Savior, through the forgiveness of sin. Then you can live strong and courageous life. Because again, he lives. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know, I know, I know I'm saved. If you're watching, you say, I know I'm saved. But man, my heart has been fearful. I, my, my heart has been broken. I, I, I'm just not sure about what, how, to, how to go forward. Can I tell you today, you can be strong and courageous if you'll just renew your commitment to him. Surrender back over to him. Say, God, here I am. God, I can't do this on my own. I don't know what's out there. But I don't want to be afraid of it. My life might change so drastically in, in a second. But I don't have to be afraid because I know you live today. Renew that in me. Church, listen, we don't have to be worried about next week. We know that Jesus lives. This First Baptist West, we can be strong and we can be courageous. We can move forward and we can go through this year and we know that God is not going to leave us nor forsake us. So would we do that today? Be strong and of good courage. I'd like you to bow your head and I ask the praise team to come back up and they're going to lead us in a song. And during this next few moments, if you're here today and, and, and you need reassurance, you, you are maybe home today and you're not sure if you know Christ as your Savior, then I want to encourage you today, call upon His name. Man, I'll be down front here ready to, to pray with you. You can call our church. We'll be ready to visit with you. But we want you to walk out of this service today. We want you to close out this service today knowing that you have Christ in your life. But maybe you're here and you say, well, I know Him, but I just, I, I just need to surrender back. I need Him to restore back to me the joy of, my, of His salvation. The joy of his salvation. Would you do that today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. We thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for everything that you've done for us and what you're about to do now in the next few minutes of this service. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Give us strength and encouragement today. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Would you stand with us? As